Okay, this is um, homework problem P13-2A. Uh, I added it to the homework. I had forgotten to list it. It is a treasury stock example. So uh, Fetcher Company has the following stockholder equity accounts. So they have common stock with a $5 par worth $500,000, paid in capital in excess of par uh, $200,000, and retained earnings of $100,000. Sorry about the spelling errors. I forgot to go back and fix those. Uh, now, if I asked you how many shares issued do they have, uh, you should be able to look at this and answer me. So the way you would do it is you'd look at the $500,000 of common stock and you would divide that by the par value of $5 and come up with 100,000 shares issued. Now at January 1st, the outstanding shares are 100,000. At March 1st, when they purchase these 5,000 shares of treasury stock, the number of outstanding shares would be 95,000 shares. And why we need to know that is because the outstanding shares are the shares you pay dividends on. So at the end of the year, December 31st, they've sold back 4,000 shares. So at December 31st, the outstanding shares are 99,000. So if they decide to pay a $1 dividend per share, uh, at December 31st, they would be paying $99,000 in dividends because the treasury stock would be sitting in the safe in the treasurer's office and it wouldn't make sense for Fetcher Corporation to write checks to Fetcher Corporation when they issue dividends. That's why you only pay pay dividends to outstanding shares of stock because Fetcher Corporation would own Fetcher Corporation stock. Okay, that's what treasury stock is. All right, so um, we have these transactions. We're going to be using the cost method to record the treasury stock. This problem does have a couple other parts, but um, I'm not going to be testing on those. So the second one has you doing closing entries. Um, and posting and the third one has you do the stockholders equity section and those aren't things that I'm focusing on for the exam. Okay, so here we are. So on uh, March 1st, they purchased 5,000 shares of stock at $8 per share. So treasury stock is going to have a debit because it's a contra equity account. So that's going to have a debit and the cash is going to go down. So 5,000 shares at $8 a share. Now this $8 a share is important because as the treasury stock gets sold, it always has a value of $8. So it's like you have an inventory of treasury stock. So every time it comes out of the treasury stock account, it has to come out at $8. So cash is going to be, treasury stock will be debited for $40,000 and you paid $40,000 of cash for it. On June 1st, we're selling 1,000 shares at $12 a share. So we're going to receive cash. We're going to decrease the treasury stock account. So when we bought treasury stock, it was debited. So when we sell it, it will be credited. Now, we're selling these shares. So I notice I put next to treasury stock $8 because when we bought the treasury stock, we paid $8. So it has to come back out at 8 when we sell these, we're getting $12. So we're getting more money than we paid for these. So we're going to have excess paid in capital for the treasury stock. So it'll be excess paid in capital treasury stock. So the cash we're getting is $12 for the thousand shares. And the treasury stock had $8 of value for 1,000 shares. So the difference to make the transaction balance is the excess paid in capital. So that'll be $4,000. On September 1st, we're going to sell 2,000 shares at $10 a share. So again, we're getting cash. We're giving up the treasury stock that's at $8 a share. We're going to receive $10. So we're going to get more value than what we paid for the treasury stock. So we'll have more excess paid in capital for the treasury stock. 
So we're getting $10, $10 for 2,000 shares. The Treasury stock is $8 for 2,000 shares, so that's 16. And then we need to balance, so it's $4,000. Now I'm going to make a note over here because the rule is if you end up selling the Treasury stock for less money than you paid for it, the rule you have to remember is that if you sell treasury stock for less than you pay it, you can reduce the excess paid in capital in treasury for treasury stock specifically until it goes to zero. And then if you need more, you reduce retained earnings. Okay, so we need to know how much total we have in excess paid in capital for treasury stock. So I'm making a note here that the excess paid in capital balance is $8,000 because I had 4000 that I got on June 6 and I have another 4000 that I got on September 1st. So the total balance, cumulative balance is 8000 Now on December 1st, we're going to sell 1000 shares and we're selling them at $7. So when I go and look at this, okay, I know I'm getting cash, but I'm selling these for less than I paid for these. So the rule is I can reduce my excess paid in capital of treasury stock until that goes to zero. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go below zero, but I know if I go down to zero, I'm going to take the rest of the money I need out of retained earnings. So I'm just going to put that account there in case I need it. And then I'm going to reduce the treasury stock account. So I set up the journal entry, what it would look like in the worst case scenario. So I have this set up so I know what I need to do if I need to do it. So the cash, it's $7 a share times 1,000 shares. So my cash is $7,000. My treasury stock, it's $8 times a thousand shares, so it's eight thousand dollars. So I only need a one thousand dollar credit to get this to a debit to get this to balance. So I put that in. And I knew I had eight thousand because up here I had made a note I had eight thousand. So if I only need $1,000, there's not a problem there. I don't have to go to the retained earnings. And then I'm going to update my information down here that says now my excess balance there after it's updated is 7000 So if I need to go forward, um, I know I still have $7,000 in there. Now, if I was keeping track of how many units in treasury stock I have, I started with 5000 I sold 1000 3000 4000 so I still want to have 1000 shares of treasury stock. So it's possible that I could sell those at a low enough price um, that I would have to take some money out of retained earnings, okay? But if you set it up, I mean, I just generally set up the journal entry like this so that I know the rule. And then if I don't use it, you just cross out the retained earnings account. Okay, I didn't need to use this. That's fine. Or erase it, you know, it's not a big deal. So it just sets you up so you know, okay, this is the way I have to go through this.